Paul said, I want you to know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God. And immediately he goes on to describe the Lord Jesus. And without controversy, grace is the mystery of Godless. Seems like well, there must be something missing here, right? Well, dear Christian, this is how to behave yourself. The way we behave ourselves is by keeping occupied with the Lord Jesus. When I first went out preaching, a brother came to me and he gave me advice that was better to me than a million dollars. If you can't see Christ in your brother, see your brother in Christ. You ever tried that? You hear the words of the Lord Jesus in John 17? His prayer is one of advocacy. In other words, he speaks well of the people of God. You you read that prayer over, and you won't find one negative thing said about any of the disciples. He doesn't say, oh, Father, poor Peter. Every time he opens his mouth, he throws himself into it. And and James and John, boy, they want to barbecue people if, if they disagree with strongly enough. Call down fire from heaven on them. And Thomas doesn't believe a thing I say. But you know, there's not a negative thing said about them. They love me, they love thee, they kept thy word. I heard of a brother in an in assembly where there were two men that were odds with, with each other. They'd been friends, but the, something had happened, and they got missed, and uh, they, they'd been offended, and they just stayed apart, you know. And the brother saw that. And so he asked to take the one man out to lunch, and they went out to lunch. And, and he said to him, you know, I've noticed you've had a little problem with brother so-and-so, and he does have his problems. But because we all do, don't we? But in spite of his problems, you'd have to agree with me that he's been a faithful brother over the years, hasn't he? Well, yes, but... Oh, no, yeah, okay, I know what comes after the butt. I know he's got his problems. I just uh, I, I just wanted to express to you, and I thought you'd agree with me, that he has been a faithful brother, hasn't he? Well, yes, he had to admit he was a faithful brother. Anyway, uh, a few days later, he took the other brother out for lunch. And he said, you know... Uh, I was I was out for lunch with Brother So and So, and I know you've had a little problem with him, and and I brought you up in the conversation, and I mentioned that that I felt it. I mean, you know, you've got problems. Everybody's got problems, but in spite of that, I one thing I really appreciate about you is that you've been a faithful brother. And you know what? He agreed with me. He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. And he said, you know, this brother, <laughs> he's got his problems too. But he really has raised his family well, hasn't he? Well, yes, but, well, yeah, okay, I know what comes after the butt. But, but I'm, I'm simply making the point that, that he really has done a good job of his family. God's really been helping him in that area. And I, I appreciate how he raised his family. Don't, wouldn't you agree with me? Well, then back over to brother number one. And it wasn't too long until they were sort of, you know. Anybody with a hard head and a big hammer can knock down. If you want to be part of the wrecking crew, go to it, my friend. God will take you in hand. Now, we're not saying that people don't have their problems. We all have our problems. But I want to tell you, if you major in the ministry of discouragement, but what a pathetic ministry that is. If you want to know how pathetic it is, who can give me the names of three of the spies that went into the promised land? Well, we only know two, don't we? They were the two that believed God and sought to encourage the people of God. If you want to be forgotten, you look to yourself. If you want to make a mark for God, you be an encouragement. 